Next Tuesday, January 20, 2009, Barack Hussein Obama will be sworn in as the next President of the United States, and George W. Bush will be out. In my opinion, symbolically, America will be jumping from the frying pan into the fire. I don't believe that there is very much difference between George W. Bush and Barack Hussein Obama. They're both globalists, they're both liberals, and they're both phony Christians. In fact, someone traced back their ancestry and found them to be distant cousins. There's not a whole lot of difference between the two of them. But anyway, this video is about George W. Bush and his legacy. There are a few things that George W. Bush did that are good, but overall he has been one of the biggest failures as a president uh, since I've been voting. With Bill Clinton, at least you knew that you were getting a liberal, but George W. Bush deceived people. He claimed to be a conservative and a Christian, but he is not. The first time George W. Bush ran for president, many conservative Christians supported him. Uh, George W. Bush claimed to be a Christian and he said he had repented of alcoholism and that he had given his life to Christ but he has fooled a lot of people. I think the whole thing has been a scam from the get-go. I don't think he's ever been a true born-again Christian. Even to this day there are people who still think that he's a good man and he's a Christian no matter what kind of evidence you give them that's contrary to that. They make excuses for George W. Bush by blaming the people around him, saying, for instance, uh, the president is only doing what the people around him are saying, uh, saying that our religions worship the same God. But hello, doesn't George Bush have a Bible? Can't he read? Does he not ever study the Bible for himself? There are many things that George W. Bush did uh, that would show that he's not a Christian. For instance, uh, just a few, he entertained porn stars at the White House. He entertained Ozzy Osbourne, the occultic rock star in the White House. George Bush has appointed open homosexuals to positions in his administration uh, and things like that that show that he is not a true born-again Christian. A few weeks ago he gave an interview and he repeated again that all religions, Muslims, Christians, whoever worships the same God. And he also claimed that the Bible is probably not literal. And he said that evolution is compatible with the Bible. And that is crazy. That is not biblical. This man is not a born again Christian. If we had paid attention, many of us could have uh, saw that he was not a Christian. To begin with, George W. Bush is a member of the occultic group, the Skull and Bones. And never once have I heard him renounce ever being with that group or repent of being of that group. And any time that he was questioned about it, he danced around the issue and gave vague answers. When George Bush was first elected, he brought Ted Kennedy and all of the liberals in Congress to the White House and was all buddy-buddy with them even though they were the minority and he didn't have to do that. George Bush has wasted the opportunity he had to bring about more conservative government. He could have done more uh, to grow the economy and to expand conservatism uh, and to get the federal government out of our lives. I mean he had both houses of Congress as Republican but he was a liberal. He governed as a liberal. He has tripled the debt that this country owes. He has brought more government into our lives to control our lives. He has created more government programs. I think the first major bill George Bush signed was Ted Kennedy's pet project, the No Child Left Behind bill. And I personally know of parents who said that that law is terrible. It is holding their kids back in school. Um, the kids that do the worst in the class are holding all the other kids back. They are dumbing down the students. And these parents are moving their kids from one school to another to avoid this craziness. The only thing that stands out to me that George W. Bush did that was good 
was that he signed the bill to ban partial birth abortion. And I think he probably did that to keep the Christians in the bag, so to speak. But I'm glad he signed that partial birth abortion ban. I think he also did some things to stop federal funds from being used for abortion. He might have also did some work for the Defense of Marriage Act uh, against homosexual marriages. I'm not doesn't come to my mind right now exactly clear what he did but I think he did some good there too well two other things have just came to my mind that George Bush did that was good he rebuilt the military after Bill Clinton had decimated it Israel although George Bush did try to push this Israelis to create a Palestinian state and he did some things uh, that was wrong but Pretty much overall, he has stood tall and stayed strong with Israel. There was 9-11, uh, and during that time, uh, George Bush was a good leader. His popularity, uh, his approval rating was very, very high after 9-11, but there are many unanswered questions about 9-11. Uh, there's a lot of videos and information out there on 9-11, and frankly, I would put nothing past George W. Bush or any of the Bushes or any of those politicians. Don't get me wrong, I do believe that there are terrorists out there, but it seems like to me that it's the American people and not the terrorists that are being punished. George W. Bush used 9-11 to pass many laws that take away some of our constitutional rights. And he's doing this I guess in the name of fighting terrorism he has accomplished a lot to bring about what his daddy spoke about the new world order and think about these big bailouts that George Bush has brought about these last few months he is, seems like that was pushing everybody to pass some kind of a bailout bill or the economy or everything that the world was going to come to an end but I think it's all part of the plan to bankrupt this country to help bring about what his daddy, again, what his daddy spoke about, the New World Order. In closing, again, I think that this country is going to jump from the frying pan into the fire with Barack Hussein Obama coming in. And I do not wish him success in his policies because his policies are evil. My hope is, is if the Lord tarries, that the Republicans in the Congress and other people, other conservatives, will not drink Barack Hussein Obama's Kool-Aid and fight against him trying to pass his socialist agenda through. And in the meantime, in the next couple of years when the next election comes up for Congress, that many of the seats in Congress will be replaced with conservatives. Beyond that, if the Lord tarries, then maybe some good people will run against Barack Hussein Obama as president. Um, maybe Governor Palin or Alan Keyes or Chuck Baldwin. And there are other good conservatives out there that need to step up to the national level. As for George W. Bush and his legacy, I'm glad for the little good that he did do for pro-life and pro-traditional marriage the good that he did for Israel and the good that he did for our military to build it back up. I wish he was a true born again Christian because the new world order in the end is going to lose. I say goodbye to Mr. Bush but Barack Hussein Obama is going to try to take this country from the frying pan into the fire. That is my view.